season 1991-92, Barclays Division, Division 4 finishing 20th, Rumble O's Cup first round, FA Cup first round. On the 3rd of June, Calderdale Council, no longer wanting to be burdened by shares in a club that was running at a loss, applied to the High Courts to appoint an administrator to run the club. Talk had been held with potential buyers, but as none were considered suitable, the council felt that their action was the only option. Before they knew it, five more bids came in for the 76% shares. On the 15th of June, the council announced that they, would, they were to sell out to Jim Brown and the, the owners of a local bathroom makers, Aquarius, David Greenwood and Bobby Asprey, at a knockdown price of £1,000. The deal was confirmed at a council meeting four days later. The only stipulation being that Jim Brown would pay off all outstanding debts by February. Councillor David Helliwell looked back on the council's involvement with Halifax Town and said, Our link with the club as a major shareholder has succeeded in that it helped Halifax Town to continue over a difficult period. With Halifax Town's future secured, until the next time that is, and a new sponsorship deal confirmed with Paraglass, Jim McCallyog was given the go-ahead to buy new players with money made available. But the town boss was not having it easy. Having already released Mark Ellis and Dean Martin, he found Brian Butler wanted away and rising star Craig Fleming rejected new terms. Fleming eventually moved to First Division of Older Athletic and Better Things for £80,000, while his older brother Paul, who had been at the Shea since leaving school, also took the chance to move on. He signed for Mansfield Town in exchange for £10,000. McCallyog brought in four new players in the close season. The first was Bradford City utility man Greg Abbott for £25,000. Abbott was joined by two players from Scarborough, fullback Alan Kamara and Steve Richards. McCallyog described Richards as the best centre half in the fourth division. At £25,000, he probably needed to be. Last but not by no means least, McCallyog brought in young Rochdale defender Chris Lucchetti. Steve Norris scored for fun during a pre season tour of Scotland, but when the gloves came off, it became a familiar story. Despite winning their second league game at Maidstone, Town soon found themselves near the foot of the table. This was all the more surprising, considering their performances over two legs in the Rumbleos Cup against 2nd Division Tranmere. Town led 3-1 at the Shea before losing 3-4, but in the return at Prenton Park, they recovered to take the tie into extra time, before losing 3-4 again on the night. The 6-8 overall score suggested goals galore this season. This was half right. The Shea men lost 3-0 at Walsall and 4-0 to Rotherham, although they did win 3-1 at Aldershot a club about to receive their last rights. But with Town still looking for their first home win, they lost 1-3 to Mansfield. Never mind that the results sent the Stags to the top, it was the final straw for the Town board. On the 2nd of October, McCallyog and his assistant Brian Taylor were sacked, with Chairman Jim Brown citing failure to win at home. They had played six league and cup games as the reason. McCallyog had struggled the previous season, albeit with a team he could not really call his own but things had not improved even with a host of new players of his choosing. The following day, the former Newcastle and Scunthorpe stopper John McGrath, a great motivator, the board reckoned, was instilled as the new town boss. McGrath recruited Oshaw Williams, the ex-Southport Port Vale and Preston winger, as his assistant. McGrath had previously turned round the fortunes of ailing clubs Port Vale and Preston, both of which he guided to promotion from the 4th Division on shoestring budgets. It was hoped that he could display similar magic at the Shea. There was, however, no immediate change in fortunes. A credible draw was gained at Lincoln, but the size of McGrath's task was evident when Town lost 3-0 at home to Chesterfield. McGrath sought to bolster his defence, starting with the goalkeeper, and forked out £47,500 for Swansea City's Lee Bracey. The new bros then acquired Dudley Lewis on loan from neighbours Huddersfield. When bubbly midfielder Ronnie Hildersley, who had played under McGrath at Preston, returned from a stint in Canada, he too was snapped up. Hildersley made a big impact in his second game, scoring a sensational late equaliser at non-league Witten in the FA Cup. It helped to keep the club's season alive, very briefly, for there was no joy in the replay at the Shea. Witten won 2-1, all the goals coming in extra time, and the fans already were fast losing interest. They voted with their feet for Town's next home game, with only 881 turning up for the visit of Wrexham, although those that stayed away missed an absolute cracker as Town won 4-3. By Christmas, though Halifax had signed left-back Paul Wilson from Northampton Town for £30,000, they still languished in 16th place, this despite getting the new year off to a good start by winning at Doncaster. 
They then failed to win until March. The fans had their own explanation for Town's plight, most pinpointed the sale of Steve Norris as the major reason. Though, Nor though Norris was not as prolific this time around, he was still the side's leading scorer, and without him goals were always going to be hard to come by. But McGrath needed money for team building, and in Norris he had the player who could help fund it. In January, McGrath loaned him to Chesterfield. A fee of £33,000 was then agreed, leaving town supporters not only shocked, but angry that he'd been let go so cheaply. In February, midfielders Jason Hardy, Burnley and Kevin Donovan, Huddersfield Town, arrived on loan, but results did not improve. The following month, McGrath came up with another surprise, selling Steve Richards to Doncaster. McGrath evidently did not rate Richards as highly as McCauley Og had done. The upshot was that Town pulled off probably the best win of the season. 3-1 home win against promotion chasing Barnet on the 21st of March. However, only two more victories were recorded before the end of the season, and the Shearmen could not even rely on the Auto Glass Trophy to restore their pride. For the first time in six seasons, they failed to reach the knockout stage, after losing to Scunthorpe on the 7th of January. But, although no one was relegated, the Football League intended to increase membership to 94 clubs. There was no room for complacency. With crowds at the state Shea still lowest in the Football League and the club continuing to lose money, the fate that befell Aldershot came as a clear warning. Aldershot were wound up in the High Court on the 25th of March, just days after playing what was their last league game, a 2-0 defeat at Cardiff. All fixtures against Aldershot were expunged from the records, including Town's 3-1 win at the Recreational Ground in September. That left Town with only 10 victories to their name, and worse, only 34 goals, the lowest total Halifax had ever recorded since their formation. The future was ominous. John McGrath may have pulled rabbits from the hat at Port Vale and Preston, but he needed a different kind of magic to sort out Halifax Town.